Hi student, this is online session of class 6. Now student already we have finished the first few lessons which are related to our food items. Now let us proceed towards the third lesson that is fiber to fabric. Now student, uh, these both are the new concepts to you. Okay, till the fifth standard you are not studied or you are not knowing that what is meant by fiber, what is meant by fabric. Now here we want to study that in detail we are going to study about the fiber and how these fibers are getting converted into the fabric that also we want to study but what is meant by fiber what is meant by fabric these both concepts are related to our clothes understood so it means what this lesson is completely based on our clothes so let us begin with this lesson first of all we will study the first part that is what is meant by fiber now let us see the thin thread or the filament which form a yarn are called it as a fiber now let us see first of all what is meant by yarn then we will come to know that what is meant by fiber okay yarn means what yarn is simply in our day to day life we are calling it as a thread okay so, so it means what the thread means you are yeah okay so now many of the student or you all might be you have done one activity that is threading the needle have you passed the thread from the needle okay the small opening which is presented over the needle so we have everyone i think uh, we have passed the thread from it so while passing the thread from the needle we are facing so many difficulties why we are facing the difficulties because if you will see from the long distance you are getting the end point of that thread okay only single end point you can see it over there but wherever you go uh, you go close to the thread you are getting the so many small filaments of that particular thread over understood so what are these thread okay or what are these small particles or what are these thin we can call it as a thin threads okay so it means for these small particles or the single thin strand okay strand means what very fine means finer than the thread okay so these fine particles are called it as a fiber so it means what the thread is made from the fiber correct it so the fibers are twisted together and then it will be converted into the thread or yarn you can call it as a so let us begin towards the yarn now let us see the student now what is meant by yarn now yarn yarn is defined as a long twisted and continuous strand compressed of interlock fibers or filament which are used in knitting and weaving to form the cloth. Now you may have understood that okay, the uh, as uh, we have discussed about the fiber. Fiber means what? The single thin strand, okay, which are not connected with each other, okay. But whenever, whenever we are twisting the fibers together, then that fibers are converted into the yarn, okay. So yarn in simple language already I see that the yarn are called it as a your threads okay so now the second line which is very important that these threads or these interlock fiber interlock fiber means what these fibers are connected to each other and they make one big or the long twisted continuous strands okay so that are called it as a yarn so these yarns are utilized to make the clothes or to make the sheet of a clone so while making the sheet of the clone here two methods also they have given okay so it will be utilized for the purpose of knitting and weaving of the clone now let us see uh, means uh, we have under uh, now we will proceed towards the fabric now what is meant by fabric the sheet of a cloth is called it as a fabric now sheet of a cloth sheet of a cloth means what now the cloth is ready understood what is the first part or the what is the beginning part of this fabric that is fiber okay the single thin strand then after that from the fiber we are making the yarn and after the yarn we are making the fabric understood so the sheet of a cloth which will be uh, the sheet of a cloth is called as a fabric we make the different types of cloth by using the fabric but once the fabric is ready then we can make the various types of the clothes understood like a shirt pants bed sheets saris okay we can make the various types of clothes 
okay so it is beginning with the when flow chart is given over here you can see the flow chart over here so who is the initial stage or what is the initial part or the initial step of the fiber to fabric the fiber is the initial part after that fibers are twisted together and they converted or they turn into the yarn that yarn is called as a thread and after that this thread are woven togetherly or knitted togetherly and then they will be converted into the fabric so till here everyone understood that what is meant by yarn what is meant by fiber or what is meant by fabric okay so we will begin with the next part that is where do fiber comes from what the biggest part now as uh, we have started the beginning of this lesson so in that we have to study the uh, from where to be get this fiber okay fiber kahan se aate hai okay so while discussing about the fiber we are having the two sources of the fiber as uh, you are knowing that regarding food lesson in the previous lesson we have studied that from where do we get the food item so there are also two uh, ways we have got that one is plant product animal product like this now we are remembering that okay so with this part only we have to discuss over there from where do we get the fiber now for there are two types of the fiber now one one type is natural fiber whereas the other type is synthetic fiber now let us see what are the definitions of that now let us see begin with the natural fiber so the natural fiber means one of the fibers that comes from the plant and animals okay that are found in the nature are called it as a natural fiber very simple it is okay the fiber which we get it from the plant or animal okay why why plant and animal i am discussing because plant and animals are related to our or that are found in the nature so that's why these are called it as a natural fiber so which are the mm, uh, natural fiber the examples for example your cotton jute okay the cotton plant jute is there jute plant is also there so we are getting the cotton and jute fiber from the plant over there whereas the wool is acquired from the fleece of the goat or the sheep it can be also acquired from the hair of yak rabbits and camels so it means what the wool comes from the animal so it is also called it as a animal fiber whereas the silk we are getting it from the silk worm the cocoon of the silk worm we are getting the silk so that's why these are called it as a animal fiber so in short what what it mean so in short we can say it in this way that the natural fiber also having the two types that is plant fiber and animal fiber so plant fiber very simple the fiber which we get from the plant that is called it as a plant fiber so what are the example of plant fiber that is jute cotton even linen is also the example of the plant fiber whereas the animal fiber very simple the fiber which we get from the animal is called it as a animal fiber okay so the example already i say that the silk and wool are the example of that have you understood about the natural fiber yes so let us begin with the next slide which is related to your synthetic fiber now what is meant by synthetic fiber i am adjusting my screen according to the um, texture or the according to the slide okay uh, wherever vacant portion is there i am switching my uh, uh, window of my video and shifting towards that so let us see the synthetic fiber So what is meant by synthetic fiber? The fiber that are made from the chemical substances, that is substances not found directly in the nature, are classified as a synthetic fiber. Now, very simple. The synthetic fibers are having the three names to it. The first name is uh, synthetic fiber. Second one, artificial fiber, and third one that is man-made. Now, by its name only, might be uh, you might be have already understood that. What is meant by artificial thing? Artificial means what? Which is not natural, which is not found naturally. Okay. What is meant by man-made? The thing which is made by the man, which is made by the human. Okay. So let us see what is meant by synthetic fiber. The fiber which is made, which are made 
made up of the chemical substances the chemical substances which are made by the human being okay or these fibers are made by the human being very simple definition these are called as a synthetic fiber or artificial fiber or man made fibers now which are the examples of these examples are included with the nylon acrylic polyester these are the examples of synthetic fiber you understood about synthetic fiber let's begin with the now on these two concepts there are many times in the exams one compulsory or if you will see that many of the time the questions are asked on the differentiation differentiate between the plant fiber uh, sorry differentiate between the natural fiber and synthetic fiber so we will uh, once we'll see all the differences between these and then we'll proceed for the next part now let us see what is the differentiation you if you will read it then also you will understand that now what is meant by differentiation or what is meant by the differentiation differentiation means what you want to uh, see both are the opposite of each other correct it how opposite is the first part that is natural it means it is uh, naturally and synthetic it is artificial so both are opposite of each other so we can differentiate between that so what is the first uh, differentiation point between them both Uh, natural fiber i will read it just natural fibers are found uh, fi fi fibers are fibers that are found in the nature examples we have to mention it over there that is the wool silk cotton are the example whereas uh, synthetic fiber these are man made and simply prepared in the lab with the, uh, by using the chemicals over there examples are nylon teflon is there polyester is there okay so these are the examples of that. Now, second point um, about natural fiber they are good absorbent and so able to absorb the heat temperature cold sweat etc depending on the condition and the nature of the fiber now already we are knowing that nowadays summer is going on so we are preferring the cotton clothes why because they have the good absorbent so okay absorbent means what they are absorbing the liquid so understood so whereas in the synthetic fiber they do not have such type of pores okay which is presented in between that why because these are made by the chemicals and how the chemicals will give you the uh, what we can say the quality or the uh, features like the natural fiber okay so this is completely opposite now let us see third uh, point between both uh no spinning process is required for filament production now in this natural fiber we don't require the spinning process spinning process means what in that we have to arrange the machines and on that we have to spin no okay so simply the thread we can make it and we can uh, by the thread we can start the weaving method or knitting method and our fabric will get ready but whereas in the synthetic fiber the melting wait or dry the spinning processes are used to make the filament production filament means what the thread while uh, making the thread so the melting after that to, to make it wait to make it dry and after that this uh, process will get completed and we can make the filament for that filament is the raw material which is required to make the thread so let us see the next point let us see that is uh, the fourth point that is natural fibers are comfortable in use whereas the <coughs> not as comfortable like the natural fiber already i have said that okay. after that number 5 that is their length is naturally obtained and it is not possible to change the fiber structure okay so the length is naturally obtained so the length is naturally obtained means what they are going that How much it can be, okay? Or we can't change the structure of the fiber so much. Whereas, with the synthetic fiber, their lengths can be controlled by the man, and the fibers can easily be changed into the different structure. Okay, we can change its structure, we can change its length. Okay, or it is in the control of the human being, so we can do these changes over there. Whereas, we can't change. We can't do like that. We, uh, Cotton here, the cotton is very different, and on the other plant, we have made it something different. It is not possible. Why? Because it is natural. But by changing the sun or other chemical in the synthetic fiber, we can go for the uh, different types of the 
structure of the fibers we can go into it. Okay. Let us see the next part that is uh, now here we want to study it about the we say now we have finished about the two uh, types of the fiber we get the uh, this fiber the two sorts of the natural and synthetic whereas now here we want to study about the some uh, natural fiber see this video the same lesson same lesson is the concepts okay regarding fiber the key uh, this, uh, this lesson is predicated on all key classes. Okay, so the very introductory part is given in the sixth. Same lesson is applicable or it is available in the seventh standard also. In the next standard, in detail, we are going to study about the synthetic fiber and the plastic parts. Okay, so let us begin with the natural fiber. In that natural fiber, so plant fiber also we have to study. And we have to also study about the some animal fiber. Now let us begin with the plant fiber, which is very common okay, in your textbook also. And one second I am telling that before seeing this video or after seeing this video, go through the textbook at once. Okay? So let us see the first plant fiber which we want to discuss it, that is your cotton. Now let us see already we are going about the cotton, in general we are using the cotton fiber various ways, okay, the biggest use of the cotton which is utilized to make the cotton, whereas in some household work also or in the medical, okay, uh, film also the cotton is utilized here. Now let us see, where does the cotton wool come from? Now the cotton plants are grown in the fields usually places having a warm climate and black soil. So what is the condition which is required? So one more question, two more question. Can we ask over here? Write a short name on cotton. So we should know it over there. Okay. So, so first thing is what? What kind of soil is required for the cotton? That is black soil is required. And what kind of climate is required? That is warm climate is required over there. So the commonly the cotton is taken in the area where there is a less run for it. So now let us see which are the some uh, uh, cotton producing states. Okay, these are Punjab, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, Maharashtra, etc. In our state also, in Maharashtra also, in a large scale, the cotton crop is taken. The far come to Maratwara and the Vidarbha, the cotton is very uh, commonly crop is taken by the farmers over there. Whereas the cotton is presented inside the fruit okay, of the cotton plant. The cotton uh, plant uh, bears a fruit the size of a lemon. It's called it as a cotton ball. Okay. The cotton plant is very one kind of a fruit which is uh, the size of lemon. Uh, I think uh, everyone has seen the cotton plant. So in that, that are called it as a cotton balls. And when the cotton balls are being dried properly, so after that, we are removing the cotton from it. Okay, let's begin to the next part. Now, the ginning of the cotton. Now, what do you mean by ginning process? Now, uh, you might have uh, heard about the ginning process. Now, what do you mean by ginning process? The ginning of a cotton can be defined as a process of separating cotton fibers from the cotton cells. Now, what is this process? In this process, what is the the process of separating the cotton fibers from the cotton cell. This cotton, this, uh, as I discussed about the cotton ball, this cotton ball contains the cotton, is the fiber of cotton, and it's a, it also contains the seeds of this cotton which are presented inside of that. So traditionally the ginning is done by the hand, but these days the machines are called double roller, the cotton Ginning machines are widely in use. Now you can see the picture which is given in the slide. This is done by the hand. Okay, initially it was done by the hand. But after that, nowadays that uh, double roller machines are there which will be utilized too. And what is meant by the ginning? Very simple in one line you can mention it. The separation of cotton fiber from the cotton seed is called as a ginning process. Okay, so why the ginning is important? Because the cotton ball contains the seed solar. Okay. Now let us begin with the next part that is the jute. 
Yo, this man, my juke. Uh, how this jukes are prepared? Once I will show you the juke plan. This is the juke plan. Once again, I will see, show you this. Uh, look, this juke plan. Okay. Now let us begin with the juke plan. Now the juke plan, the juke fiber is obtained from the stem of the plant. Now there is a stem of the juke plant, and from the stem of the juke plant, we are getting the juke over here. Now how to get the juke fiber that also we are understanding? How it will be utilized or where it will be utilized that the plant also we are understanding? Now let us see. The unlike cotton, the juke is cultivated in the rainy season, as I said you. Okay, so the juke plant is commonly taken in the uh, rainy season because it requires a lot of rain over here. So basically, this plant is taken in the states of the Bihar, Assam, and West Bengal. Okay, so the plant is harvested within the flowering states. So now, as I said you that you can see the uh, this plant at the stem level, you can see it over there. We have to cut this plant from the stem, and whereas we need to cut this plant when the plant is in the flower stage but the, there is no flower out there so we have to understand that now it is time to harvest the uh, jute from it okay so the plant is harvested during its flower stage now the stems of these harvested plant, harvested plants are then soaked in the water for four to five days now what what to do over there now how to obtain this now let us see First of all, the stems, the harvested plant, okay. the stems of the harvested plant to be kept it in the water for the few days. Okay, for what purpose? To work in it. What to do? Okay, so what to do? Water may be for the four to five days. So what will happen? The water, they will react with the water and the stems. Then the stems are getting soft over here. And after that stop, so the stems are left to rot and then the fibers are picked out by the hand. And we can easily we can uh, pick up the fibers from the juke. Why? Because it is completely rot and when it is completely rot, then the we can utilize it. Now where the juke is used, is it, you know, as I said about the cotton, cotton is utilized to make the clothes and everything we have studied that. So I think that where the jute is used, the jute fibers are commonly used to make the jute bags, okay, which is used to store the food grains, food grains store the and then also it is used to uh, make the some uh, wall, uh, wall pieces, also it is used to make the floor mats. Okay. So, have you understood about uh, this deep plant and the cotton plant? So, let us begin with the next part of this lesson that is spinning of cotton yarn. Now, till the time we have prepared the fiber from the cotton. Understood how, how we are done? We have separated by this process, we have separated by the ginning process. What is the ginning process? The separation of cotton fibers from the so this is called it as a ginning process. Where are now what is in the spinning process? Now let us begin with the spinning of the yarn. Uh, spinning of cotton. Now we mean by spinning. Spinning is a process with, uh, of constructing uh, constructing the yarn from the fibers in which the fibers from the huge hat of the cotton wool are taken out and twisted which bring them into together to form the yarn. Now see here, what to do over here, now we have got the fibers over there, now these fibers we want to twist it over there, now how to twist that, okay, so while twisting that, so we want to construct in the yarn, now we want to uh, turn these fibers which we are often from the cotton, now we want to convert it into the yarn, so while doing this yarn, we have to go through the process of Spinning. So what do you mean by spinning process? The twisting of the fiber. Very simple. The twisting of the fiber. Okay. Now let us see there are two major devices are there. Okay. So spinning the fiber. Now like this. Might be at your home, the house, at your grandmother or your mother. You might be out preparing the uh, thread for the uh, lamp. Okay. 
after walk jise bola jata hai so this uh, thread for the lamp while making that we are twisting the copper like this so the same thing which will be utilized over here to twist the cotton fibers over here so while twisting that there are two major devices are there so the two devices that is tucking okay, the first device is that tucking which is hand spindle hand spindle means what all our hand by using our hand how to do it and one is that that is a charkha charkha is also a hand operated machine okay it is a device okay that it is hand operated whereas the we can uh and do the spinning process very fastly with the charkha okay because of that at the same time we can go for the लहरजमन पर पात्र निकल गए पर सो के बट वेरेन इफ यू विल यूज द टकी देन वेरी यू इट इज वेरी स्लो काइंड ऑफ थिंग एंड बिकॉज़ विद आवर हैंड ओनली वी हैव टू सी नाउ लेट अस सी द बोर्ड ऑफ पिक्चर्स ऑफ दिस हाउ यू कैन सी इट ओवर देयर एट टू योर लेफ्ट देयर इज अ चरखा यू माय कंसीव इट इन द हिस्ट्री ओके वेरेन द गांधी जी इज कंडली यूजिंग दिस चरखा ओवर देयर वेरेन द टकी यू कैन सी इट दैट It's a hand spindle. It means by using our hand, we have to uh, spin the cotton fiber. So, understood? Let's go back. Now, P here we have studied that what is meant by fiber? How do we get the fiber? So that how to convert the fibers into the yarn? Means, for example, we are studying about the spinning process. But after that, now we want to study that. How to convert the yarn into the fabric? What is meant by yarn? Yarn is called in simple language we are calling it as a twisted fiber, or it is called as a thread. There is what is meant by fabric? The fabric is called the shape of a thread. Now we want to move in towards the next part that is yarn to fabric. It means what? How to convert the uh, threads into the fabric, or how to make the shape of a thread? Now there are two major ways are there. The first one that is a uh, weaving method. There are the second one that is a knitting method. Okay, so let us begin with the weaving method. And what do we mean by that? Once again, I am repeating this lesson is very easy lesson. But go to this video two to three times and also go through the notes. Then you will understand it very easily. So let us begin with the next part. so let us begin with the weaving method now what is been by weaving method the process by which the two sets of yarn arrange together lead to form the fabric it is done on the looms now what is meant by loom loom means simply the machine okay to say machine bola jata what is meant by loom loom is loom, it means simply the machine now let us that what is the process actually now in weaving involves the placing of two sets of the thread or yarn made of fiber uh, called the wrap and the weft okay of the loom now let us see over here now how this arrangement is there students you might have prepared the mat from the paper okay while making the mat from the paper how you are placing the threads over there or how you are placing the, see for example these are the threads so how you are placing the or so while making the paper mat how you are uh, taking you are making the pieces of the paper and then you are one by one you are shifting that paper like this correct it so same thing is over here so how to make that so the one okay the threads are kept it in the parallel means parallel means for both are similar to you see the both fingers are parallel to each other correct it is a both the parallel so like this parallel threads are kept it and from that okay the in uh, <coughs> the interplace we are interplacing the right in the right angle to the wraps now let us see now what is meant by wrap wrap means what the parallel thread whereas some th the other threads we are passing is interplacing interplacing means what ek chhod one is from upside one is from downside one is from upside one is from downside like this we are placing and interplace in the uh, right angle to the wrap okay have you understood this one the weaving method weaving method means what two threads okay 
If you will see the differentiation, the clothes which are made by the wearing method, these are thin clothes. Okay, thin clothes means what? Like our shirt, pants, sari. These are the best example of the wearing method. Why? Because if you will see clearly, then these. Now, if you will see the this uh, sheet of the clothes. Okay, so you will understand that these lines. It means what? The one part is interlaced. Okay, you can see this. How these threads are. Uh, arranged over there okay so some threads are parallel and whereas the some threads are interlaced from this understood so the and this uh, this course are thin clothes how many threads are required for the two threads okay so this uh, this is done by the two threads are interlaced with each other and then we can go for the weaving method whereas let us see you can see it over here the <coughs> complete method you can see the uh, some thread, the wrap, wrap means what? What is it by wrap? The parallel thread. So you can see the parallel thread, whereas the wefts okay, are arranged in this way, and now the uh, sheet of the cloth is getting ready over there. Understood? How to make it? Have you understood? You see the A picture, then B picture, then C picture. You will understand that how this weaving method is done over here. Now let us see what is meant by knitting method. The knitting method is the method in which the, or the process in which the single strand of the yarn is used to make the piece of fabric. What I see in the weaving method, there is a connection between the two yarn or the two thread side. Understood? So many threads are required, but there is an interplacing between the two threads. Understood? So, but whereas if you will talk about the knitting method, how many threads are required over here, or how many yarn is required, a single yarn is required over here. So, best example where the knitting yarn is prepared, you can see here the knitting, uh, the method of the knitting. So, the knitting it is utilized to make the socks, sweater, mufflers, so and a lot of winter clothes are made by this. Uh, you might have seen the woolen ball, okay. So by that woolen ball, so okay, the woolen ball that thread that bundle okay, so from that thread bundle you are using the knitting can be done by the hand as well as by the machine. While doing with the hand, we how to use the knitting needles. Okay, in the market knitting needles you might have seen or maybe it is available at your home. The picture I have shown over here, you can see this picture. Understood? So knitting, what is the difference between the knitting and knitting? Like this question can be also asked. Once again, I will look at within two minutes. What is the you weaving? Know, weaving which will be utilized, okay, or the weaving method, which is done across the more than two threads are required, whereas the two threads are interplaced with each other, like the one is parallel, whereas the other one is interplaced from that. Understood? Like the paper mat which you are made. Whereas the knitting method, knitting method requires only single thread, okay? And what is meant by knit, knit, knitting method means for applying the knots, okay? A specific knot we are applying by using the knitting needles only, understood? So that's why this method is called as a knitting method. So whereas this the examples, uh, if you will see the, our clothes, our shirt, our towels, uh, our uh, saris, is, uh, all common clothes are made by the weaving method, whereas the socks are there, sweaters are there, bucklers are there, these are made by the knitting method, whereas the weaving method is done on the looms, looms means it is done on the machines only, and whereas this uh, knitting method can be proceeded by using the hand or it can be also done on the machines. What is the, uh, the difference between the uh, texture of the clothes made by the knitting and weaving. The weaving clothes are thin as compared to the uh, knitted clothes, whereas the knitted clothes are thicker than the woven clothes. Why? Because in the knitting method, we are applying the knot to the thread. And because of it, wherever you will make the knot, if I will take one thread and I, if I will apply the knot to the thread, then what will happen? If that portion will get little bit thicker over there, understood? So due to that, in the knitting method, we are getting the thicker coat, whereas in the weaving method, we are getting the thinner coat. Okay? 
And let us see the last part of this lesson, which is very simple, that is the history of clothing material. Now, how nowadays we are using a variety of clothes, but what about ancient clothes? What, what about at the initial stage that we want to study? Now, let us see in the earlier times when the people did not have access or the knowledge to process the fiber. The big leaves and the bark of the trees were used by the people to cover themselves. Already we are knowing that in the few subjects or in the history that we have studied that at the initial stages we are not in the clothes so people at that time they are wearing the leaves and the bark of the trees they are used by the people to cover themselves. Okay? Because what? At that time people are not having the knowledge of making the clothes okay, or how to obtain the fibers. We are not knowing about it. So the early Egyptian cultivated both water and flax <coughs> and used them for creating the fabric. These plants grew near the river Nile. Now river Nile, near the river Nile, the Egyptian people, Egyptian people must work in the Egypt. Okay, the people of the Egypt, these people have cultivated the cotton and flax. Flax is also one kind of a natural fiber. So they have cultivated that and from that they have made the fabrics over there. And after that, now the fabrics are uh, introduced in the world. And after that, we have pre we are preparing the clothes are prepared by the fabric of the cotton and flax. But in those days, the people they do not have, uh, do not aware of the process of stitching. They simply use the wrap, uh, wrap around the fabric, around the different parts of their body. Even today, unstitched clothes like the sari, dhotis, lungis, and turbans are widely used. So it means what? At that time, they have introduced or they have uh, invented the how to make the fabric, how to spin, how to make the thread. And after that, but they are not knowing that how to stitch the clothes. So that's why that time they are preparing the unstitched clothes for you. So what, what they are doing, how they are wrapping the paper around any bit. So like that only they are wrapping the uh, sheet of a cloth around their body. Nowadays also some unstitched clothes are uh, available in the market. Like the saris are there, dhotis are there, lungis are there, turbans are there, dupatta is there. These all are the unstitched clothes. So there are two types of clothes are available. One is a stitch and one is unstitch. What are the examples of stitch clothes? Shirt, pants, okay, salwar, kameez, okay, dresses are there. Okay. These are stitch clothes. And unstitch looking as a thing, the sari, dhutis, lilies, or thermos, dupatta, these are unstitch clothes. Understood? How is that uh, what is the history behind the now let us see here the lesson is finished over here. So I hope that all the students have understood this lesson. If you are not understood, if you are having any problem, you can contact me or the, the, you can also WhatsApp me whatever your problems are there. You can ask me the question. There is a homework for this lesson, solve the exercise uh, given at the end of the chapter. Also, I am uh, giving the workshop. Uh, Based on the, this lesson, so we go through it. Okay, uh, so all the students, thank you. Stay home, stay safe. And I hope that all the students are doing the study well at home. Just continue this. You don't know that any days it will get extended. We think that we should not hamper our studies and we should go through. Okay, so once again, thank you everyone and uh, go through this part.